The sights, sounds, and smells of a steam locomotive ushered in a new era of travel in Madison, Georgia in 1841. And as train tracks spread across the state, so did the use of a new style of affordable travel luggage, the carpet bag. In the early and mid-1800s, Madison was the county seat and a regional center of education and merchandising, attracting students, parents, businessmen, and others needing a hotel or tavern. Regular folks began riding the rails in large numbers. They needed inexpensive luggage, and the go-to piece became the carpet bag, manufactured and sold by the thousands. By the 1860s, carpet bags were carried by almost everyone. When traveling during the Civil War and on through the 1870s, your stylish carpet bag was by your side, no assistance needed. This lightweight carry-on bag came in many sizes and shapes, and were often assembled by saddle makers, who had the tools and know-how to work with leather and metals. The entire bag could be made cheaply from remnants of the better parts of old carpet, scrap wood and leather, and an iron upper frame with lock closure. They were sold in local stores for one to two dollars a piece. No two were identical, some even custom made. With the outbreak of the Civil War in 1861, some soldiers carried carpet bags to serve not only as a bag, it could be unrolled for sleeping. Today's Civil War collections include soldier-identified carpet bags. Their iron frames and brass locks are a common find at Civil War sites. The derogatory term, carpet bagger, arose after the war, during the Reconstruction era, when Northerners who ventured south in search of profit and political opportunity carried their goods and belongings in carpet bags. As late as 1886, Scientific American magazine regaled the carpet bag as still unsurpassed by any where rough wear is the principal thing to be studied. Such a bag, if constructed of good carpeting and unquestionable workmanship, will last a lifetime.